What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here and welcome back to yet another video. Today is a fun day. I have to take pictures of this here ring for a special launch that's happening, well, today. I wanted to do something a little special for it. I didn't want to just do a regular product photo. I wanted to do something a little bit out there, a little more involved, and I thought I would bring you along for the entire process. You see, I want you to see the conception, the setup, the actual shoot, and the edit so that you can be doing the exact same thing by the end of this video. So that's what's going on today. Let's, it was hard to get on that I thought, let's get started. So I sent my friend some dice that I made and he took an incredible photo of said dice. And you see, he was seemingly rolling the dice through the frame and it looked so good. And I thought to myself, man, that must have taken so many takes. Sam, how did you do that? He's a genius and a wizard in Photoshop and explained that it's fake. He put all the dice in individually and, and made that happen on the computer. I thought, well, that's great. He taught me how to do it, gave me some tips and tricks. And I thought today we would recreate Sam's photo using some finger rings. Okay, so let's talk about what I'm thinking will work for this shoot. I wanna use this surface because it's super modern and it matches the ring, it matches the vibe, and I feel like it will match the grid really well and we'll make this the main surface. But I want it to look like it's being lit by window light. This is our countertop. What I'm thinking is the 300, the 300D is here, and that is blasting all of our light, side light, as if you were shooting beside a window that was maybe right here. I want this photo to kind of look like I'm rolling dice, but rolling a bunch of rings. So I think my hand would be here. One, two, three, four, five. How's that for a hand? <laughs> and the rings would be rolling down the table. Now I'm gonna need some other props, a strewn about, so that these rings are rolling through them and it looks great and it's all lit from the side. So we need to set up this light, we need to get some props, and then position me in place with my hand so we can get that shot of the rings rolling. Now you might be asking yourself, Pete, how are you gonna get those rings to roll and without shooting it a thousand times? Well, we're actually gonna Photoshop the rings in individually by taking five different photos. And you might be asking why you need five photos and why are you doing it this way, not actually using the big window that you have. I don't want the light to change. If I'm gonna be taking five photos because I'm Photoshopping in the rings the exact position I want them to be so that it looks great, I need that light to stay the same. It needs to be constant. That's why we close the blinds and we're gonna tweak everything so it's exactly the way we want it. We want full control. And that's what this tutorial is about when it comes to shooting items, products, stuff like that. How to get full control and have your shot be exactly the way it is in your head or on your iPad or on a napkin or maybe the back of your hand or maybe you just, I don't know. Maybe it's Maybe it's out of a box that's on a box. Maybe you wrote it on the flap of a box. We are on 10 second timer. Another ring. Please join them. Boom. Okay, so looking at the frame right now, it doesn't look exactly like window light. And I think that's because it's just such a targeted space where we have this 300D. So I need to light up the background more so it doesn't just feel like there's a single window in this one space. Turning on my background light, this one right here, kind of lights up the back of the frame. Okay, I think I might add this board to the, the surface. I liked the reflection, but then I realized it's just gonna be double the Photoshopping because if I'm putting these rings in with like tweezers or something, which I'm gonna do, I'll have to Photoshop that out of the reflection as well, which uh, I think lends more to the style of these rings anyway and doesn't make them any less modern. Gonna try it out, getting there. See all these coffee flakes? I think they might look cool if I just dump them all over the, the wood board. There's absolutely no need for it. Like it seemingly doesn't make sense. But when there's more texture and it's subtle texture like this, like sawdust on the ground or raindrops on top of an item, they don't take away from it. They just make it more interesting. And subconsciously, you won't even pick up on it. You'll just see it as a whole and think, dope. That looks good. I could probably use like a bottle of whiskey and like a glass with a little bit in there. A couple more props. It warmed it up, like real nice. Oh, 
We gotta sample that. I'm lacking on the props right now, so I gotta be creative. I like the coffee grinds, like the whiskey's good, playing cards make sense. I just wanna give a little more depth to this scene. You see, what needs to happen here is around five photos. A photo of the basically set without any rings, the photo of me seemingly rolling the rings, then three photos of each individual ring. So that's five photos that we're combining into one photo. So the frame can't move. It can't be handheld because if it's a little bit off, when you're masking and painting in the other objects, the light's different, that's why the constant light, if the camera's in a different place, it's just not gonna line up. So everything has to be fully controlled and dialed. I know you guys like that word, but I, I say it a lot apparently, so. Take a drink every time you hear dialed of chocolate milk. Okay, now this is what you're gonna need for this photo, a pair of tweezers. Now this is all I have. So what I wanna do is just hold the edge of that ring with the tweezer. I'm gonna hold it like this. We're gonna snap the photo, and because we have those blank frames, I can paint my hand out easier. Then the only thing I have to paint out in Photoshop is just where the tweezer is. That's a lot better than having to paint out my fat fingers holding a ring that cover half of it and change the light on it and cast the, my skin color into the, the shiny parts. All I'm gonna have instead is that. One of the tips that Sam was mentioning is if you can get those objects interacting with other objects in the frame, i.e. casting shadows or seemingly kicking up some dust, that makes it look like the shot may have actually happened and you caught the perfect frame, less of like you just cutting and pasting items into a single photo with Photoshop. We want to avoid it looking as fake as possible, like putting a mountain in a desert or something like that. So that's the goal. All right, welcome back to the desk. Now, it's time to edit all five of those photos that we took into one beautiful photo. Now, to do that, load all the files in, get them all into Lightroom, then I go through and I flag which ones are gonna work. I didn't just take one picture of every ring in one position, I used a few positions to see so I would be able to choose at the end when I'm going through on the computer, which one looked the best in relation to the other ones and how far they were, how far away they were from each other, how close, etc. Once I chose them, I went ahead and exported them. I didn't do any edits yet. And then I brought them all into Photoshop. But before we jump in to Photoshop, we gotta take a moment to thank our sponsor for this episode, which is none other than Skillshare. Wait, 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 wait. If you've never heard of Skillshare before, I don't understand. If you have any spare time if you have free time on a bus, on a train, at home, sitting, watching TV, eating breakfast, eating lunch, outside, lounging, summertime, vacation, whatever, it's a great time to learn new skills. To learn even the skills that I'm teaching you now. If you wanted to learn more about Photoshop and Lightroom and photo retouching, there are hundreds, thousands of online courses to do so. One of my favorite courses and a buddy of mine on here, Brandon Wolfel, great photographer, incredible photographer. Another street photographer that I love and I've been following for ages just Trash Hand has another great course online if you wanna go in and learn styles and tips and tricks from all these individual creators. And that doesn't end at photography or Lightroom. You can literally learn anything. Now for the first thousand people that click the link in the description below, it's just the first thousand. So if you're, you just click now, pause and click now, you'll, you'll get it. We're gonna give away two months free of a premium subscription. Two months free. Literally just get in there and cram for the summer. Just load it in, highly recommend it. I didn't realize I suck at winking. Like my whole face, like I just can't close one eyeball without. <laughs> Maybe they have a course on how to wink properly. Once I had them all in Photoshop, I started with the base layer. That was the background picture. That was nothing in it at all. Then I pasted on the picture of my arm and my hand. Then I pasted the pinky ring. Then I pasted the second ring. Then I pasted the hero piece, which was front and center. So once I had all those layers built, then I went ahead and masked them one at a time. Now clicking on the layer mask at the bottom with the paintbrush selected with, I believe it's white as the foreground, you can paint away everything in that photo that you don't want, revealing the layer beneath, which in our case is the frame of the background in my hand, seemingly rolling these rings. So after painting them away as close as I could and then going to the next layer and painting that one away and going to the last layer and painting that one away, all three rings are now visible in frame. It looks okay. 
but you notice looking at it, it just looks a little bit off because the rings are just kind of seemingly pasted into position. They don't really look like they're a part of the environment. They look like they were added, even though we took them in the same environment. So what I did is added field blur to every single layer. So the ring that was in the very back corner, which I labeled all the layers according to the names of the rings, heritage, I blurred the heritage ring the most out of all three. Then I blurred the shield ring a little bit less than heritage. And then obviously Voyager, I blurred the least amount. But there was one little trick that I did with the Voyager ring that sells the image completely. You see this plane of depth of field here where it is actually a sliver of focus across the frame. I made sure that this ring fell into the same plane of focus. So I duplicated the layer, went up to filter, blur gallery, field blur. And that's what gives you a really realistic looking depth of field with Photoshop. Now I added a field blur to the entire layer. Then I went back into the layers palette, added another mask to that and painted away the blur along the same depth of field sliver that's in the background photo so it matched. You see the depth of field in the foreground and the depth of field in the background based off of how shallow that looks, this ring would only be in focus in a certain spot. The whole ring itself would not be in focus just based on how the background image looks. So I had to make sure there's a little bit of blur on the ring in the foreground and a little bit of blur in the ring on the background. And that's what really made this photo start to look realistic for me. Once I was happy with those changes, I saved it, brought it back into Lightroom, and then just added my color stylizing, if you will, to make it my style and give it that kind of attitude and pirate life attitude that I feel these rings represent and matches the whiskey and the playing cards and the knife in the foreground. And once you are done all of that, you have a photo that looks like this. So yes, that's a lot of steps. There's a lot of things involved in that, but when you break it down step by step, it's not overly complicated. Now this edit took me an hour. So that entire screen share you saw that was just condensed into these few minutes was an hour of work. So it, it's not something that goes by fast, but there are a few tips that Sam gave me that I'll pass on to you so that if you're doing this in the future or tonight or in the next 20 minutes, you'll be able to take these things into account to help you get the most realistic looking photo possible. Now that I got my message up here with Sam, his first tip is obviously using a tripod, which I mentioned when we were setting this up in the first place. Preferably artificial light, so the environment isn't changing on you, making things way more difficult. Now Sam says not only are the objects interacting with each other, but the last tip would be having them interact with the environment itself. And that goes back to if you're rolling dice or if you're rolling rings, they are kicking up some of the dust on the table or they are casting shadows onto the table. The object and the environment are working together to make it feel realistic, not just things floating in the ether for no reason. So hopefully some of those things help you when you're taking your photos, some things to keep in mind. Also, check out Sam, say hi for me, tell him I sent you. I'll leave his link in the description below. You've also probably seen it pop up on the screen by now, but Sam is a great photographer and we have a lot of fun uh, working with my other brand, uh, Pete's Pirate Life. So Sam, thanks for the tips. Thanks for letting me recreate your photo and uh, yeah. Hyped. If you liked this ring, if you were like, oh, those are some nice rings, Pete. You always wear a turquoise ring. Like you wore one in the bucket shot. You've been wearing them forever. We see them in your videos since the beginning of time. Uh, where did you get them? Which is honestly an email I get. You'd be surprised the amount of people who wanna know where I get my rings. I made these rings. I made them. I made them with a company in Toronto where I get a lot of my rings from called Clocks and Colors and they're available now. You can get them at the link below. And yes, I know you probably think shameless plug, but honestly, I'm super proud and super grateful to be able to do things like this with cool people to make products that speak to me, that inspire me, that, that take my passions like photography and the outdoors and wrap them into products that I use on a daily basis and have been. So uh, if that's of interest to you, click the link. If it's not, don't even worry about it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, but I'm super proud of this collection. It's three rings and a pendant, a necklace. And the necklace, the pendant is actually based on one of the photos that I had minted onto Canadian currency. You've probably seen it of Mount Rundle. 
So they're all designed based off things that I love, things that are very me and my passion for the outdoors and heritage and so on and so forth. And if those interest you, this is my favorite one. That's the, the classic PM turquoise ring that you see all the time. Then you've got the mountains won't remember me right here with the antlers on the side. Then you've got shield named after the Canadian shield with uh, with some cool tree roots on the side. That's it, that's the whole collection and we're super excited. And we're super excited about it and I'm just pumped. And if you're pumped, I'm pumped. If you're not, I'm still pumped. Thanks, just thank you. I really appreciate you. The links are below, all the links are below. Check them out. I think you might like them. They make you better photographer, especially if you wear one on every finger and you're like 10 times the photographer, you know? Uh, you're gonna pick a card for me, but you're at home so you, you can't say stop. So I'll just, I'll just stop for you anywhere. Let's see if you can see it. Uh, that'll be your card right there, okay? Don't forget it. We're going to leave it in the middle of the pack. Here's the thing, boom, it jumps. Jumps out of the pack to my hand and then it vanishes and comes back. Whew. Magic. Welcome to the new video. Good.